Today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely set of bunk beds. They've got a removable ladder, a lovely uh, grooved head and footboard at each end, and I'll show you how to make a really sort of simple um, mattress as well using foam. And these are actually surprisingly easy to make. Okay, so I've included the cutting list down below in the description. And coming up next is a list of the tools and materials you'll need. And then we'll get started. For this project you're going to need a suitable craft wood, such as a besh, basswood or gelatol, a craft knife, a steel rule, a nice sharp pencil, an eraser, a suitable wood glue, cocktail sticks, a flathead screwdriver used for scoring grooves into wood, masking tape and scissors, a couple of grades of sandpaper, your choice of paint, varnish or wood dye. For the mattress I've used a 12mm half an inch upholstery foam, You'll also need a couple of pieces of card to make the base for the mattress and double-sided tape and scissors. So once you've cut all of the required pieces, sand the sheet wood pieces on both sides and along the edges as well. And then with your strip, if you find that you've got these sort of little fuzzy bits at the end of the strips um, from your saw. Rather than sanding those, just use your um, craft knife and just snip those off. So just go along the end like that. If you sand these pieces, you tend to sort of round the edges over and we want to keep them nice and square. So just do that to start. And then we're going to begin by preparing the head and footboards. Now I've already done three of them. And we're just going to score grooves um, down each piece and that's why I advised to cut it so that the grain was running in the direction of the shortest edge as you can't score grooves in the opposite direction to the grain. So we're going to begin by marking the piece up. Let me just bring the camera around a little bit. And because we haven't got um, a divisible length we're going to start um, the first groove at 12 millimetres and that's um, 15 30 seconds of an inch and then we're going to go along in 10 millimeter um, increments and that is 25 60 fourths of an inch and then that way you'll have a 12 millimeter gap at that end as well so do your first groove and then just go along in 10 millimeters or 25 60 fourths and do that on each edge of the wood and I've already sanded this piece and then turn it around and place the steel rule just below the pencil mark and that will allow for the thickness of the um, screwdriver and we just want to use that very corner of the flat head there so hold on to your rule and then just do a light score across the piece and then you can do a second score just to make it slightly deeper but always do the light score first because otherwise it tends to go off track and sort of jump into another sort of um, groove of the wood another sort of piece of grain so just slowly work your way along and when you when you've done about four grooves, turn it around and work back up, otherwise your ruler will tip off the end. Like that. And then take a small piece of um, sandpaper, this is medium grade but it doesn't really matter, and we're just going to sand in each of those grooves. So just fold um, the sandpaper over and just crease it in. So you've got a nice thin piece there to go inside the groove. You only want to go along a couple of times. And 
like that and then take your fine grade paper and you can sand over the entire piece again and that will remove the pencil marks like that and then you can either just blow on that to get rid of the dust or use a nice soft um, dry paintbrush just to clean that off So do that on all four pieces, the headboards and the footboards. Okay, so I've dispensed some glue onto a piece of card and I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it. So take your end strips, that's the six by three strip and you'll have eight of those. And we're going to attach two to each board like that. So apply glue along the long edges the footboard or headboard, they're all the same. Pop that back down on your work surface and then just press the strip along the top and bottom edges, making sure that this edge here is nice and level or flush. Make sure it's all pressed down against your work surface and then just carefully squeeze that together and just slide that across your work surface that can be left to dry and then do the same with the remaining three. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry on these pieces, you can just sand along each edge just to make sure you've got a nice flush edge. And to do that, just hold it against um, a sheet of sandpaper on your desk and just go along in the one direction. Don't sort of rock it back and forth like that or you'll round off um, the edges. And I've already actually done these like that. And then take the two lower bunk head and footboard um, tops and we're just going to glue one along the top of two of the pieces and then these will become the lower bunk headboard and footboard. So just apply glue along that top edge and then lay it down on your work surface and press the top piece against it. Then you can take a spare piece of 5x5 five five strip and just press that into place like that. It's just easier to do it using a strip. And then remove your excess glue with a clean cocktail stick. Like that. Just pop that to one side to dry and do the same with the footboard. Okay, so now bring in your four um, leg pieces, and that's the four from the five by five strip, 13 64ths of an inch square. Turn them onto the side like that, and we're going to make a pencil mark on each one, 23 millimeters, or 29 30 seconds of an inch, from what will become the bottom. So 23 millimetres, 29 30 seconds of an inch. I just want to do a little line across the piece like that. Do that on each one using the ruler rather than the piece that you've just marked up. That way you get a more accurate measurement. And separate those into the two pairs. Get rid of that ruler. And then we want to have the top one, so that's the one without the lip. And then the bottom one, the one where we've attached that top between each pair. And the bottom one will sit just above that little pencil line that we just made. And let me move into shot a bit better. And the top one will be flush with the top of the legs. So apply glue along each short edge of each headboard. Pop that back 
down and then the same again with the lower bunk headboard. So glue that one to the top of the leg, you'll have a nice flush line along there. And then that's so that it sits just above that pencil mark we've just made. And then bring in the remaining leg and just slide that into position. Okay, making sure that top edge stays nice and flush there and that at the bottom it's sitting just above that pencil mark. Press it all together. Use your clean cocktail stick to remove the excess glue. Oops. Just pull that apart. And then again, don't pick that up, but just very carefully slide it along your work surface and that can be left to dry. And then do the same with the remaining pieces. Okay, so while those two end pieces are drying, bring in your four side pieces and place seven slats just roughly um, between each pair and then apply glue to each end of the first sort of seven slats. And then just place them back down on your work surface. Like that. And then with your side pieces standing on their narrow edge, so on the three millimeter eighth of an inch edge, attach a slat along the top so you've got a nice flush edge there and then one at the bottom and then just put that one roughly um, in the center and you can just bring in your sort of short rule just to check what gap you've got that needs to come down a little bit I mean do make a pencil mark in the center if you'd rather sort of measure precisely I'm just doing it by eye and then you can just put the remaining four in like that evenly in the sort of top and bottom section. So these aren't scenes, they don't have to be precise but just make sure there's one at the top and the bottom and flush along the top and bottom and then one roughly in the centre and then basically fill in the gaps and then you can bring in the remaining side piece and attach it making sure that the top and bottom pieces flush again along the top and bottom edges and then this is where some spare strip helps and I'm just going to use these other two side pieces to press that all together make sure everything's touching and if you find you've got any gaps it might be because one slat is just slightly too long so you'll just need to trim it off and then again, rather than picking that up, just slide it along your work surface. And that can be left to dry. And then you can do the same thing with your remaining two sides and remaining seven slats. Okay, so while our mattress supports are drying, bring back in the sort of bed ends and just erase those pencil marks at the bottom of the legs there. And then turn the pieces over. We're now going to make a pencil mark um, for our upper bunk um, long panel, just the one in the centre. So turn one piece on its side like that. And you just want to make a pencil mark in the centre of this top um, headboard. Get the pencil there. And you just need to do it on the um, leg. Just go across like that 
and then on the other one as well, but this time on the opposite side. So if you've done it on the right hand leg as we're looking at it here, do it on the left hand leg as we're looking at it on this one. And then bring in one of those um, long panels and also make a pencil mark in the centre of the wider edge, so of the six millimetre quarter inch edge, and again in the centre. And you just need to do that at each end. Like that. Okay, so we're going to begin by attaching the bottom bunk um, mattress support to the end and that will sit right at the bottom of this bottom strip here and so that the slat is sort of centralised. So these side strips will be on the legs and that slat will be in the centre level with that strip there. So apply glue along that end and also you want it so that this flat edge here is at the bottom, so towards the legs, and then that's a sort of lip for the mattress to sit inside. So glue that onto there, and press down, and just hold that in place for a moment while the glue begins to take. Once that's sort of dried off a little bit so you can move it without it falling apart, bring in the top mattress support and again apply glue to the end. Again, this is going to sit so that it's level with this bottom edge of the top headboard. And again, so that the flat edge is at the bottom. And again, that it's sitting so that the slat is level with the headboard. And these strips are sitting on the leg. So just sort of put it into position and have a look around the other side and make sure that it is actually flush with the bottom of the headboard. I'm aware that my hand's in the way at the moment, but let me just... Um, get it in position and then I'll turn it around so you can see because it's still sort of quite a flimsy structure at this stage it's quite difficult sort of pressing it all together because there's nowhere really to hold on to <laughs> so just sort of push those strips down and push that end slat onto the headboard as well I'm just going to carefully turn that so make sure that you've got a sort of flush um, edge along there. And carefully remove your um, excess glue, like that. And then I want to turn it all the way around and bring in the panel that you've put the um, pencil mark on. And that's going to sit again on the inside of that leg, so it's level with the sort of side mattress piece there. And so that those two lines line up. So just pop a little bit of glue on the end there. Just make sure that it's on the inside of that leg and not overlapping onto the headboard. And again, I'll turn it around in a moment and show you what I mean. Keep it as sort of straight as you can, as upright as you can, but we will sort of straighten it all out when we add the other end, when we attach the other end. Let's carefully turn that around. So that should be sitting flush along that line of the leg there. And then we can attach the final panel and this sits right at the top and again on the inside of that leg. Apply a little bit of glue again to the end. And 
And if you want to leave that sort of middle panel to dry off before you do this one, then you can. Because it's quite tricky to sort of get to it without knocking that central one. So again, that's sitting just on the inside of that leg. So again, leave that to dry off for a moment and then we can attach the other end. Okay, so when you've let that dry off enough so that you can handle it without it falling apart, apply glue along all of these exposed areas at the end and we can attach the remaining piece. bring in the other piece and again you want to lay that on there so you've got a nice flush edge along there and just concentrate on the bottom bunk first and remember again that these long strips are on the legs And then come around here and I hope you can see what I'm doing there because it's a, a taller piece than normal I'm not sure if I'm in the right place and then on the top bunk again make sure that that slat is in the center what I actually want to do I might just get that bottom piece in place and then put a little bit of masking tape over just to hold it while I'm working on the top one I'm going to put one piece right across the bottom like that, pull it nice and tight and then I'll just put a couple of shorter pieces over like that and we can always add some more tape so you don't have to sort of put too much on at this stage it's just sort of holding it roughly for now and then you can come up and work on that top one so a nice sort of flush edge there with that rung and then these two pieces might need to turn it now so that central one there let's move in a little bit so that central panel there should be lined up again with that central pencil mark so get that into place and then press it down and then that top should be lined up with the top there so again line it up and press it down at the top just turn that round and again so you're on the just on the inside of that leg so get them lined up press down into place so again before the glue dries you've got time to sort of move it all about so that it's all in the correct position make sure that central panel stay in central to that mark top one is flush at the top and again I'm just going to put a bit more masking tape okay, so I'm just very carefully going to turn that around Put a piece of tape across that part as well. Pull it nice and tight, just making sure it's all staying in place there. And I'll put a bit over the edge there as well. Just make, I have, make sure I haven't knocked those rungs out. Nope, they're still where they should be. just want to put a piece through there and again curl that down onto the bottom like that so it's a bit of an awkward shape but get in as much masking tape as you can and all the while keep checking that everything's staying where it should Just 
stand that up now. Okay. So I'm going to leave that there for today. And then tomorrow we'll make the ladder and position the sort of remaining rungs, which aren't as, aren't as long as this side. And then it will be ready for paint. So have a lovely evening. And I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. Okay, so we're now going to fit the railings to the top bunk. So turn the bed onto the side like that. And we want to make a pencil mark 19 millimetres or three quarters of an inch from the top of this leg. And that's just to place the central railing. And that will be where the centre of it goes. So 19 millimetres, three quarters of an inch to do a line all the way across there. And then the same again on one of the um, upper bunk short panels. Just trying to remember what I'd called it there. And just do that in the centre at each end. Like that. And then finally take the short panel support and do a pencil mark uh, 19 millimetres, three quarters of an inch again from what will become the top and that actually needs to be on one of the short edges let me just do it there and that needs to be on the short edge of the piece and again the centre of the panel will sit across that mark ok so leaving the piece there on its side and I'm just going to grab a small piece of um, sandpaper so I've just noticed this top leg is a bit rough and that's probably from where I had the masking tape I'm just going to sand over that and I can still see my pencil line so I'm just going to draw that back in like that and then I've got some um, glue here so you start with your central panel, the one you've made the mark on. A little bit of glue. You can actually put a little bit of glue at each end. And then stick that again against the inside of the leg. And so that those pencil marks are lined up. So I just need to turn it here to have a look on the inside. Let me just make sure that you can still see there, yep. Yeah. So it should sit just on the sort of line of that leg, so where the leg joins the headboard. Keep it as straight as you can. Just press it into place. Like that. And then the top one, again, will sit at the top of that leg and again on the inside. Use your finger to make sure it's flush with the top of the bed. The top of that leg, rather. Straighten that one up. It's always tricky when you're attaching sort of long pieces um, just to one end. So there's nothing sort of to support them until we put that short support into place. I forgot I didn't put any glue on that end and I'm just going to touch that up as well. And then apply glue just to the bottom of this and your pencil mark should be 19 millimeters from the top. So I put a little bit of glue on the bottom there. And then we need to be able to see that pencil line so we're then going to attach it that way round so you're sort of just laying it at the end of those two. It needs to come down quite a bit so that it's in line with that pencil mark. So make sure that one's at the top. You've got a flush edge along there. Sort of press it down so it, you've got a little bit of support as you're working. And just move you up a little bit. And then that pencil line should be in the centre 
of that strip so line it up with that other line we made and then it should be flush against the edge of this long strip here so again quite tricky to position it but you have got a bit of time before the glue begins to set so you can sort of move things around until you're happy with the positioning there like that and then you can sort of leave it at that angle for a moment to start to dry like that and then take the upper bunk head and footboard top pieces and we're going to round um, the ends of each piece so again take a piece of medium grade um, sandpaper and this is a 180 I'm using and just holding it in your hand just round over those corners so you're just sweeping the paper from front to back and you can see that's just starting to round off so do that on both corners and I sort of like to go from front to back as well to give a sort of rounded edge at the top and bottom like that, tidy up that underside as well and then do the same thing again at the other end okay so do that with both pieces and we can now stand the bunk bed upright and then we're going to attach those one at each end so that we've got an even overhang at either side and here at the back and on the inside as well. So I just cut it so that it's about a millimetre on either side. So apply glue actually to the bunk bed. Make sure you get it on both of those legs as well. Put that piece on. that down. I'm just feeling with my finger that I've got the even sort of overhang at either side there. And it'll only be a little bit, less than a millimetre probably. On the inside as well. And then get in there with a um, clean cocktail stick and just remove any excess glue and I'm trying not to touch these panels as I do it because that's not dry yet and then what you can actually do is just put a couple of little bits of masking tape over that just to hold it into place press it down and then the same at the other end So I'm now going to leave that to dry and I've actually um, agreed to walk my neighbour's dog um, so I'm going to go and do that now and I'm actually not looking forward to it because about an hour ago it was minus two outside so I'm hoping it's warmed up a little bit and that's why I've got this big old um, jumper on it's got a m big massive collar as well so you're very welcome to come with me I hope you will but do make sure you wrap up warm
I was walking across that cold field, I kept thinking about a nice hot mug of tea. OK, now I've warmed up enough, we can begin construction of the ladder. So begin by rounding off one corner at the end of the long and the short side. And you can do that on a sheet of sandpaper on your worktop. And just hold it at an angle, sweep it towards you, bringing it into an upright position as you do so. Just make sure you've got a nice evenly rounded end. And then you can take a piece of fine grade paper and just tidy that up. Like that. So do that on both uh, pieces, the long and the short. Like that. And then this rounded edge becomes the bottom edge and the front edge. So we now want to mark up the rungs and I want to do that on the back of the piece so you want that rounded edge laid down on your worktop like that to make our pencil marks. So just push those pieces to one side. Now I've got a few uh, pencil marks for you here. So I'll give you the millimetre measurement first and then the inch measurement. So the first measurement we want to make is 13.5 millimetres from what will become this top edge, so the unrounded edge, 13.5, like that, and then 30 millimetres, 47 millimetres, and 63.5 millimetres. So again, from the top edge, 13.5, 30, 47, 63.5. And in inches, that is 1730 seconds, 13 sixteenths, 1 and 27 30 seconds, and 2 and a half inches. Like that. And then I never advise to mark another piece of wood from a piece you've just done, but in this case I'm going to because it's just easier um, than reading out the measurements again for the longer piece because obviously they're different because we're going from the, the top edge of this piece. So for these bottom ones, line it up so make sure the bottom edges are flush and you can use another piece of the wood just to do that and butt them up against it like that. And then copy those measurements that you've just made. Now, I always normally advise to use a rule because you get a more accurate mark. But in this case, like I say, there's so many measurements to give you. It's just easier to do it that way. And then we want to make a further pencil mark now because there will be another um, rung on this one. because It's longer. And that will be 32.5 millimetres again from the top. So 32.5, and in inches that is 1 and 9 30 seconds, like that. Okay, so we're now going to attach the rungs, and because this needs to turn round that way, so the long one will be at that side, we want to construct it uh, so our long one is on the uh, right hand side as we look at it so it will actually be on the left hand side on the bed but the right hand side as we construct so lay them out like that so the front is facing towards your work surface put that back over there okay so begin by applying a bit of glue to the top of the short side pop that back down there and then just to one end of the wide rung, like that. And just lay that there like that, and then apply glue to each end of each of the other rungs, and pop those back in there. And the final one. And then each of these are going to go below the pencil lines, 
and then this one will go below the pencil line on the long side and sit at the top of the short side. So press that down first and then you can press all of these into place just below that pencil line. So the pencil line is level with the top of the rung or the step. Just pressing them all into place and sort of trying to straighten them up as well. And then bring in your long side and again make sure that the pencil lines are just above the rung. And the same at the top there. And just really carefully press it all together. Sometimes you can sort of do this and it all sort of collapses. So you want to apply a little bit of pressure and then just move that along in case it's sticking to your work surface. And then I just want to get those spare 5x5 five five strips again. And I'm just going to press those up against the side like that. And that just helps to squeeze it all together. And while you're doing that, just make sure that all the rungs are in the correct position. I just knocked one out there while I was moving another one. Give it a good squeeze. Press that one down on top of the short side as well. Okay, and then again, just carefully push that piece to the side. And that can be left to dry for a moment. And we've just got that little top bit to attach, which will go on there. And then we can try it out for size. Okay, so once the ladder has completely dried, and you must leave it until it has dried completely or it will just fall apart, you can just gently sand off along the front edge any sort of glue splodges that may have seeped out and the pencil marks um, on that back edge as well. And then we've just got one final piece to attach and that's that little top piece there. So apply glue to the top of the long leg. Little dot of glue there. And then attach that so that the front is flush and we've got that overhang at the back. Press that down like that and then once again that can be left to dry for a moment. Okay so while the glue on the ladder was drying I just went round and sanded this to prepare it for paint and sanded off any remaining pencil marks as well so that's now ready to be painted. And then one final thing you can do on the ladder is just round over the front edge of this top um, long side. So just hold it in your hand and support it and then just bring the sandpaper sort of over the front edge like that. And then you could just pop them into place and the lip at the back will sort of sit on there and then the lip at the back of there sits on the top bit there. So just hook it on like that. Okay, so that's now ready to be painted. So here is the painted bunk bed and I've done two coats of an ivory coloured emulsion and sanded after each coat had completely dried. So I've made, I'm going to show you how to make a mattress and I've made um, one already as a practice run for the top bunk. And there it is there and I've covered it in this nice striped material. I've lined the bottom using a, um, the glue is actually still a little bit wet, but a different coloured fabric simply because I ran out of the stripe thought I had another piece there but you you will be able to see um, the bottom when that's in place so you will need to line the bottom like that so always sort of just put a piece over the bottom as well but I'll show you that when we come to it just pop that back on there and then to actually make the mattress I glued a piece of 12 millimeter foam and that's half an inch just to a piece of card and the card I cut first and I cut it so it's a couple of millimetres narrower um, than the width of the bunk and that's just to allow for the fabric. 
so the fabric that you line the mattress with as well as any sort of sheets you may make to go on there and then just a millimeter shorter at each end as well just for that mattress fabric so I glued um, the cardboard to the foam weighed that down under some books and then when it had dried I cut around the foam to do that and then I'm just going to bring in a piece of card just to um, cover up the desk while, I, while I'm using the fabric and I've cut a piece here for the um, mattress cover let me just move you over a little bit like that and just to show you the size in there actually go that way so you just want it big enough all the way around that it can curl over and you've probably got about I don't know three quarters of an inch um, at either end to go over and then at the side as well okay and then you can stitch that if you want so you'd cut a square from each corner and then stitch those two um, sort of seams together like that but I'm going to just use glue um, and it's a bit of a quicker process but it looks really neat when it's done in fact I can show you on the um, completed mattress how those corners turn out just like that so it's quite a neat little way of doing it without having to um, actually stitch it put that back in there so you want to begin by cutting a line from the edge of the fabric to the corner of the mattress and it doesn't matter whether you do it sort of lengthways like that or going in that way but just do it the same at each end like that and the same again at the other end and it really helps if you've got um, sort of stripes on the fabric as well if not you can just um, draw lines if you're not happy just about cutting a straight line freehand and then you want to cut another um, slit in the fabric the same length and the thickness of your mattress and card so again about half an inch or 12 millimeters away from that first cut like that so you're creating like a little um, a little flap there oops can't pick it up like that and do that again at each corner again I'm just sort of doing that 12 millimeters by eye um, I think I've done that a bit too thick but if you if you want to measure then just go ahead and, and measure those out like that and then you want to cut away each corner like that get rid of those and then you can just use glue um, for when we come to stick the fabric down um, and I shall be using glue as well but I'm going to start with some double sided tape and I'm just going to stick three pieces along the card there and again it's just a, an easier and neater way of, of sort of securing the fabric without using um, glue and I have a, a pair of scissors that I save just for cutting double-sided tape because it does tend to make your scissors quite sticky so certainly don't use your best um, sewing scissors for that okay let's pop that to one side and then you want to dispense a little bit of glue onto some card I'm going to be using just a little tiny bit of glue as well okay so take your cocktail stick and just apply, apply a bit of glue along the end of the mattress or one end and you need quite a bit because it soaks into the um, foam okay and then lay that back down on top of the fabric and you want to pull up these long sides and then pull that little tab that we cut in and stick it to the end of the foam like that and the same at the other side push that down 
and then turn it around and you want to apply the glue again to this end of the mattress. And I'm just holding the fabric up so that it doesn't sort of pull at the other end. Again, putting quite a bit on. And then again, stick those flaps down. Like that. Okay, and then remove um, the backing from the tape. And then pull over these long edges. Don't pull too tightly and be sort of even all the way along that side as well. Press that down and then just apply a little glue at each corner and that will neaten off those seams. And then you can, oh, I'm sorry, a little bit more glue on these corners as well. Just where the fabric won't be touching the tape. And then you can pull that piece over. Again, nice and evenly. Stick that down and then just squeeze those corners in like that. Press that glue down, press the fabric against the glue like that. And then you can do the same again at the other end. So a little bit of glue at each edge. And then a bit at each corner. Pinch the corners together and that can then be left to dry and then we'll stick the um, back in on and you just want to cut that leaving just a little border around each edge. And there is the completed bunk bed, ready for you to add your own um, bed in. You might want to add a couple of sheets in there and some um, pillows. And if you want some tips on making the bed in, have a look at my um, video I made for a double bed. You'll find that in my list of videos. And you'll need to adjust the sizes, but you can sort of use the basic techniques for the sheet and the pillows as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, if so please do give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already done so, as there's lots more to come. And if you enjoy making your own dolls house furniture and miniatures you might like to have a look at my books. I've published four of them so far and they're all available to purchase from Amazon. I'll pop a couple of links below. And for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.